if you don't know the story of how the whole show got started, how the Teen Suicide Prevention Society came into being, I'd like to share it with you. Actually, I don't want to share it with you. See, that's the whole problem. I don't want to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it over 24 years ago when my daughter first tried to kill herself. And I don't want to talk about it today. But I must. I must be willing to find a way to break the silence and start the conversation with you because the silence is killing us. What got me started was not my daughter's suicide attempts when she was 14. It was her sudden, brave sharing of them in a very public way after over 20 years of silence. For 20 years, we didn't talk about it. I sold myself on the idea that as long as she was getting professional help, because trust me, we did it all, counseling, therapy, medications, interventions, we did it all. I told myself that as long as she was getting professional help, we didn't have to talk about it. I didn't know then that it's the conversations we avoid that truly matter. And we didn't talk about it because I thought it was better to let the past be the past. I didn't have this understanding that I do now, that according to the Center for Disease Control, the unwillingness to talk about suicide is in and of itself one of the risk factors. Who knew? Who knew? So we had a day and it was August 2019. My daughter was giving a seven minute talk meant to be inspiring to teenagers. She was going to get it transcribed into a chapter for a book. Make it a great day. The choice is yours. Book of Inspirational Stories for Teens. When she shared the startling statistic of 3,000 a day, that being the number of teens who attempt to take their own lives every day, I felt truly startled. It, I had no clue that the number was that high. But when she started a sentence with when I was 14 and started telling the story of her multiple attempts, I wasn't startled, I was shocked. And I was in the back of the room wondering what was coming next because we hadn't talked about it. I didn't know that this was coming. And what came next made that, what, that shock seem mild. This was no aftershock. Her next sentence was that she still struggles with suicidal thoughts. She manages to find joy every day but she still struggles. And at that moment, I was in the back of the room, grateful to be in the back of the room because my brain was exploding. I wasn't breathing. And I think my heart might have stopped. And all I could think about was, how could I have missed this again? I got saved that day. My purpose came and tapped me on my shoulder because my daughter shared that she wanted to create a program for teens to help them find joy every day, to learn the lessons that she's learned along the way, the life skills, the coping skills, before they need them. And the Teen Suicide Prevention Society, the seed of it was planted that day. Now, everybody stood up and gave her a standing ovation, ran up and hugged her for being so vulnerable. And I was in the back of the room taking three very deep, very slow breaths. Yeah, stress management intervention number one. By the time everyone was reseated and I walked back to the front of the room, oh yeah, I was the host. And I had just been blindsided. I pulled my professionalism around me, went back to the front of the room, and I had an idea. We'd take the book of inspirational stories for teens and turn it into a book to help them break the silence and start the conversation that truly matters. 
I could help my daughter. We could get a program put together. I yell, I mean, that's what I do. And as good as all of that sounds about getting the book done, creating a program, the truth, those were just other ways for me to stay busy and avoid the conversation. You know, the conversation you think you might need to have with someone, but you're not sure, so you don't? Yeah, that one. Not having that conversation for over 20 years could have cost me my daughter. I just didn't know. And I didn't know why I was avoiding it. <laughs> I'd been deep diving into the realm of stress management and I'm an Eastern healing arts practitioner and I'm certified as a mediator and, 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 and I was avoiding the conversation. Didn't even realize. And I realize now I was avoiding the conversation because I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know what could cause my daughter so much pain that she would think dying was better than living. But I had to find out. And what I found out launched the mission and is the energy behind the suicide prevention show and why it's a show, not a forum and not a symposium, but a show. So we're here to show you some other ways of living, some other perspectives of being so that you can share them with other people. Thank you for being part of the show. We are really, really glad that you're here. So I was telling the story. I was telling the story of how this movement got started and how I took the Make It a Great Day, The Choice is Yours book into a local high school. And after I told the story of the inspirational stories, how to break the silence, it's about starting the conversation, it's because 3,000 teens were attempting to take their own lives every day. And then I asked the teens in the room, do you have a story? Do you have a friend who's tried or died? And they went around the room and every single teen had a story. They all had someone starting from elementary school. They had someone that they knew who had tried or died. And that revelation is really the engine that got put in place around this mission to address the teen suicide epidemic. So in case you're wondering how we got started, we got started with one woman's story. My daughter who was, you know, 34, 37, somewhere in there, I forget. I've got three daughters, it's confusing. But when I went to the teens who are living in this world, Last year, 100% of the teens in the room had a friend who tried or died. When was the last time you asked your teen, do they have a story on the topic of suicide? Do they have a friend who's tried or died? Do they know someone? Parents, you want to know how to have this conversation. There's a way to ask these questions that keeps you from triggering yourself. And that's really important. Because if you get triggered, you lose the trust of your teen. So there's a way to have this conversation in a way that keeps the trust between you and your teen. We want to help you because you probably have no clue. I had no clue. Your teen is possibly standing on the ledge wishing you would ask. So please take the time to learn how to ask. You don't know whose life you're gonna say. There'll be details in the show notes. There'll be details everywhere we can put them on how you can become a better advocate for yourself, which will teach you the six step conversation so that you can have a conversation with your team that might save their life or the life of one of their friends. So 
that's what we're about. Thank you for being you and thank you for being here. When we started the journey to try to break the silence, to try to get teens to start the conversation that would help them not get caught up in the negative cycle of emotional thinking. We knew we had a journey ahead of us. We knew we had a challenge. We knew there was a wave that was rising. The rising tide of teen suicide when we started this journey in 2019 was 3,000 a day. 3,000 a day is the number of teens who attempt to take their own lives every day. Just teens, just in the US, and just the ones who don't die. The number goes up if you add the ones who've died. It was a rising wave, and we started paddling to get ahead of it. We published a book, The Make It a Great Day, The Choice is Yours Book of Stories, to help teens break the silence. We created a self-sustaining, self-funding mission where if you bought one book, we gave two to teens for free. And we started getting some traction and two things happened. The first is that we had to face the reality that we weren't reaching people fast enough. We weren't making enough of a difference. 3,000 a day, that means 1 million teens attempting to take their own lives, selling themselves that dying is the best option at the time, that dying is better than living. We had to move faster. I got the second thing. I was offered to stand on a TEDx stage and talk about how to end the epidemic, how to stop the attempts, how to get ahead of this. And that journey took me right up against the elephant in the room. I was challenged by my TEDx coach to rewrite my talk. My original script was met with accolades from everyone in my TEDx group, except my TEDx coach. He called me out for being tactical and not vulnerable. So I rewrote my talk. He convinced me I could do something significant in the world. And I was still looking over my shoulder. You know, significant? Me? I rewrote my talk. We recorded it. And I realized I couldn't deliver it on a TEDx stage because the talk is about how to start the conversations that truly matter, how to stop being busy and avoiding them. And I was still avoiding the conversation that truly mattered with my daughter because I didn't want to know. This is the hard part. I didn't want to know what could cause my daughter so much mental and emotional pain that she would think dying was better than living. As long as she was getting professional help and she got a lot of it, I convinced myself that we didn't need to talk about it. And so we didn't for a really long time, over 20 years. And then last year, she very publicly broke the silence with that startling statistic of 3,000 a day, ending her talk with the desire to do something significant, to make a difference, to start a program. It didn't take long for me to realize that I had to have the conversation. And then I had to create a system to help other people have the conversation because if I was avoiding the conversation, with everything that I was learning about how avoiding the conversation, according to the Center for Disease Control, that avoiding the conversation is a risk factor for suicide. Who knew that it would become a risk factor? A suicide risk indicator is, are you willing to talk about this? Most of us would say no. And what I'm here to tell you is that the silence is killing us. The numbers just came out. According to the Center for Disease Control, they track the numbers of adults, young adults, 18 to 24. The number of suicide attempts, suicide focused people, and these are just the ones willing to self-identify, has doubled 
June of 2020, the number is double what it was in June of 2018. We're now at 11%. Do you know what that means, 11%? It means if you think about the 10 people that are closest to you, two of them are actively contemplating suicide. More than one of them, it's 1.1%. More than one of them is actively caught in the negative echo chamber that leads people to take their own lives. And I'll bet you don't know who it is in your group unless it's you. If it is you, or if you know who it is, don't wait. Call the local 800 intervention number. The Suicide Prevention Society is not an intervention. We are a prevention. If there is one in every group of 10, we want that one to get intervention. And the other nine, we want to talk to you. We want to encourage you to come into a self-advocacy training program. We want to encourage you to take advantage of all of the skill sets, all of the gifts, all of the support that will help you never walk near the ledge. For the one person on the ledge, please get help. Don't wait get intervention, get yourself a buffer, and then come back to us and let us help you build that buffer so that you never go near the ledge again. You never need to think about it again. That's what we're about. This is the mission of the suicide prevention movement. You're here because you care. You care about yourself or you care about someone near you. And by the way, if you're not afraid, of the epidemic of suicide, now that we know that in the United States alone, it is at 11%, and that was two months ago. The numbers are rising. Every group of 10 of your family and friends, one person is actively needing intervention. If you don't know who that is, let's just try prevention. Let's not even guess who the one is. Let's just invite the 10 into a conversation that truly matters. Invite them to the show, invite them to explore the conversation, invite them to the Facebook group. We're rebranding and launching today. You'll find the suicide prevention movement. Stay engaged. We want you to stay here. Thank you. This problem in the world, and we call it mindset. Back in the day, doesn't that make me sound old? Back in, actually, I thought it made me sound old until I heard my 10 year old grandson. Back in the day, so it's not so old. Back in the day, we called it attitude. So all of the mindset methods that are out there to improve your mindset, to give you control over your mindset, are really what we used to call an attitude adjustment. And there was a time where an attitude adjustment happened in the woodshed. It happened in the woodshed. You know, the woodshed, that place where you get told you're going because you've had just a bit too much of an attitude. Well, now there's a new woodshed in town. The woodshed of my childhood at the best, the best possible outcome of being in a woodshed was a good talking to, a lecture that was designed to improve my attitude. The outcome was most likely to be something a little more impressive on my young psyche. It often involved a belt. That was the attitude adjustment method of a woodshed. You knew you were in trouble when you were being taken to the woodshed. And this analogy has been around forever. And I am determined to tell you that there's a problem. And we all have times that we need to be taken to the woodshed. And this is the other thing that people just don't want to talk about. 
there are times when you know you've got an attitude, when you know that you are in self-sabotage, when you know that you are not being true to who you are and the mission that you have in the world. There are times when you know this. And so I'm going to suggest that in those times that you know you need an attitude adjustment, that you take yourself to the mindset woodshed. Oh yeah, this is going to get serious. The mindset woodshed. Take yourself to the mindset woodshed. When you know you have an attitude, when you have an attitude towards life that is anything other than 100% supportive, it is time to take yourself to the mindset woodshed. And when you get there, you're going to look yourself square in the eye and you're going to tell yourself four things. The first thing that you are going to say to yourself when you get into the mindset woodshed, I love you. And the second thing you're going to say to yourself in the mindset woodshed, you haven't done anything wrong. And the third thing that you say to yourself when you are in the mindset woodshed is it's going to be all right. And the fourth thing that you say to yourself in the mindset woodshed, find your joy. Look in your home, look in the room you're in, look around for the things that bring you joy and spend time with them. And after you've told yourself those four things, I love you. You haven't done anything wrong. It's going to be all right. Find your joy. Look around for what brings you joy in your current environment. Look in your memory for what brings you joy. And after you're done talking to yourself, just remind yourself that you can come back to the mindset woodshed anytime you want. Give yourself a hug and remind yourself, you come back anytime you want. I'll be right here for you. Embrace the mindset woodshed. Embrace yourself the same way that you would a young child. Embrace yourself. And embrace this idea that sometimes you do need a good talking to. And a good talking to happens in the mindset woodshed with those four statements. And the first one is, I love you. And the second one is, you haven't done anything wrong. And the third one is, it's going to be all right. Now go find your joy. Spend time with the things that bring you joy. And come back as often as you want. I'm going to be right here for you. Thank you for being willing to give yourself an attitude adjustment.